Good day, everyone. My name is Tim Hansen. I'm a technical support engineer here at Sophos. And today we're going to be looking at how to increase disk capacity for Sophos firewall on Azure. And we're going to be reviewing how to do this through two methods, one being directly on the Azure portal and additionally through PowerShell using the Azure PowerShell module. Uh, both processes are fairly straightforward and relatively quick to go through, so I don't anticipate this video dragging on for too long. Uh, with that in mind, the info in this video is based off of uh, Knowledge Base article number 126745, and you can find this article on our community site at community.sophos.com. So let's go ahead and jump into things. Uh, I'm going to Make the assumption that you already have an XG deployed into Azure, in which case you can go ahead and bring up the resource group. Click into it and uh, then open up the virtual machine. Now, if you haven't already, I would go ahead and stop the virtual machine. As you can see, I've done this ahead of time. And once the virtual machine is stopped, uh, bring up the disks option. So don't mind it if uh, there's a discrepancy between what you show for the data disk size on your end. Um, I've increased this uh, previously, so hence the reason why you likely see 80 gig on your side where uh, mine is set to 160 gigs. Um, let's go ahead and left click on the blue hyperlink under the name of the disk or sorry, the name of the data disk. And then uh, you can set the size of your disk to uh, whatever you need to for your needs. Just keep it in mind that once you do increase the size, you can't roll it back, you can't revert it. Um, so you can only change disk size upwards. Uh, you can't go in the reverse. So just uh, bear that in mind um, when you're setting the size. I'll just mention couple things here, um, that being that we are using unmanaged disks for um, our product and uh, it's uh, launched into a standard storage account. Um, now whether they have plans in the immediate future to support managed disks or to have the option of using a premium storage account, I'm not sure to be honest. Um, we'll see what the future brings. So uh, once you got your size set to go ahead and save, this will take uh, 10 seconds to apply. So in the meantime, just uh, let's bring up the virtual machine uh, once again. And then once you do see the disk um, um, completed or updated uh, successfully, go ahead and start the virtual machine. So once the virtual machine um, is started and uh, we can get the public IP address, we can go ahead and SSH into the VM. Um, just bearing in mind that even though you're going to see the virtual machine started from the hypervisor perspective, it's going to take the operating system, uh, the Sophos OS, uh, a minute or so extra um, to uh, warm up and do its thing. So just give it a bit of time before you start SSHing into it. Uh, what I will do is I'll just pause this video briefly, and uh, then once I do get a response in my putty window, we'll uh, resume. All right, so I've got a response in my putty window and we can go ahead and log in. And then once you are logged in, go ahead and select option five, then option three, that'll kick us into the advanced shell. So to resize the partition, it's simply a matter of a single command. So you can uh, copy what I'm typing or just copy and paste uh, the command directly from the KB. What you'll see is uh, you'll see something that indicates uh, an online resizing taking place. Um, so this is logically, of course, since the disk is mounted and in use, it's uh, it's doing it well online. Um, so in any case, this will take a minute or so. Um, so I'll spare you uh, having to stare at the screen for the next uh, minute. And once again, just uh, pause the video briefly until it completes. All right, so it looks like the process is completed. Um, so I jumped the gun a little bit here, but if you want to uh, run df-h minus and uh, look at the var partition, uh, you should be able to see the total size is going to be just slightly below 
uh, what you have configured on the Azure portal, which is uh, quite normal, nothing to worry about. Uh, so based on this, we know the process uh, is done, the file system or the partition is resized, and uh, we are done with the Azure portal section. So I'll just terminate the SSH session. Um, I will stop my firewall and then I'll just do a little maintenance on my end to uh, uh, make me ready for the PowerShell section. So just give me a moment here and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so uh, we're all cleaned up over here. Uh, my virtual machine is stopped. Uh, I will go ahead and bring up uh, my PowerShell window. Now I'm RDP'd into a virtual machine, which I use for these sort of things. Uh, but you can go ahead and open up your uh, PowerShell window. And uh, we're going to take all the commands directly from the Knowledge Base article and then paste them in here. So if you want to go ahead and uh, switch to the KB window, uh, select everything. Uh, sorry, don't select everything. Select steps 1 through 10 and then paste them in to PowerShell. Uh, alternatively, of course, you could just paste them into like Notepad++ and remove uh, uh, the lines I'm gonna remove here, uh, whatever your preference is. So, uh, but definitely you are gonna want to remove the instructions or steps that precede the PowerShell commands um, or just comment them out or something from me. I don't wanna look at them, so I'll go ahead and delete them. Um, if you don't, then be prepared for a lot of uh, errors <laughs> when you run the script. Um, so ultimately, once you've got everything removed or commented out, you're going to be left with, uh, um, I believe, seven commands and then four, no, three placeholders or variables. Um, okay, so I'll just make note of the second command. This is really optional depending on your account slash subscription environment. Um, so if you have a single Azure account with a single subscription, no problem, just delete this line. Uh, but you may need to specify a subscription name depending on uh, whether the your default subscription is the same subscription that the virtual machine is launched into or not. Um, if, if you have more than one subscription, I would maybe just uh, verify by using the Azure... Uh, where am I here? Oh, the get uh, Azure RM subscription command, and then I'll list out any uh, subscriptions that you're using. So if you need to specify one other than uh, what is the default for you, just uh, take the subscription name and uh, paste it into here. For me, uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete this line because I don't need it. Uh, and then we need to specify three things. Um, so one is going to be the resource group. So I know this to be uh, my Sophos firewall. Uh, we're going to uh, insert in our virtual machine name. And again, uh, for me, it is called Sophos firewall, I believe. And then specify that the uh, number of gigabytes uh, you want the d data disk to be uh, set to. Um, I will pick an arbitrary number, we'll say 190. Uh, and then in theory, we should be able to run this command and then it'll complete on its own. So let's go ahead and fire it up. Uh, so the first thing it will always do is ask you to authenticate. Um, so this is obviously a good thing that uh, it doesn't automatically run. Um, a script on your Azure account without uh, verifying that you are indeed who you say you are. Okay, so I think I should get prompted for a dual factor. Yes. All right, so once you've authenticated, the script should uh, do its thing and uh, eventually complete. So, um, oh, I guess I've, I could have excluded this command given that my virtual machine is already stopped but it uh, doesn't do any harm uh, being in there. Uh, so it may take a minute or so for this process to complete. There'll be a little bit of feedback uh, but it'll definitely uh, return us to the command prompt once uh, everything is finished. Um, I'll just make note, um, really I suppose uh, this sort of thing is good for um, 
you know, uh, one, two, three, four firewalls. If you're going to do it um, to more than, you know, to a couple. But if you're really looking to deploy it on mass, uh, if you have a number of firewalls, um, I'm guessing you'll probably want to um, incorporate it into some sort of ARM template or further expand on the PowerShell prompt so it can take uh, multiple uh, firewall names or virtual machine names and resource groups. Um, that's kind of outside of my comfort level when it comes to PowerShell. So uh, I'll leave it up to you to um, do as uh, do what you need to facilitate it into your environment. Um, let's see, we are, where are we with this? Um, it's in the process of running. I don't think it should take too much longer, but maybe what I will do is I'll just pause the video and then wait for the virtual machine to start back up. And uh, once it is started back up, I'll resume. Okay, so uh, our script is done um, and the virtual machine is back up and running at, well, at, at least according to PowerShell. Uh, so maybe what we'll do is just switch back to the portal and let's make sure this is, yeah, so that's still my public IP. And what we need to do is once again, SSH into the virtual machine and run the same command to uh, resize the partition. So I'll just log in here. I'm sure there must be a way to incorporate the step into the PowerShell script somehow using like a VM extension to run a bash script um, on it, but uh, that's quite far beyond uh, my capabilities on Azure. So um, if you're feeling very adventurous, be my guest. Um, otherwise, uh, we're gonna do this manually. So I'll run the exact same command as I did last time. Um, uh, and that is definitely not how you spell it. There we go. So once again, it will take a minute or so for this to complete. So I'll just uh, maybe fast forward this until it's done. Okay, so that is done. And let's again, if we check our file system, I believe I set it to 100 and... 90 yeah, on the PowerShell script. So expectedly, we're uh, seeing a little bit less than we have configured on Azure, which again is quite normal. Um, so that is done. I can exit out of there and actually I can just go ahead and close the putty window. So that is that. Um, we're all finished there. Uh, there's nothing else you have to do. Um, I'll do some cleanup on my end. Uh, as far as you go, um, I guess thanks for joining me. And if you do have any questions or comments, feel free to be them, uh, leave them below. Uh, otherwise, we will see you next time.